This morning, the government has a new report on silicone breast implants. Five years after allowing them back on the market, the FDA says the implants are safe, but warns the longer a woman has them, the more complications there are. Medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with more. Nice to have you back, by the Thank way. Thank you. Good to be back. So when you look at these findings, the report that came out, they're saying, okay, look, still safe, but keep in mind, you may actually have to have them replaced. Exactly, and this report was really part of the FDA's ongoing safety surveillance of silicone implants, but they also looked at saline. But when they looked at the silicone type of implant, really what they found is these devices, because that's really what they are, not meant to last a lifetime. In a 10-year period, 20% of women who have implants placed for cosmetic reasons or just straightforward breast augmentation will need them replaced or revised or removed. When you talk about women who have had breast cancer and have had the implants placed for breast reconstructive purposes, one in two women will face a reoperation or removal of those implants in a 10-year period. Why, why would a greater number of women having them done for breast reconstruction need to have them replaced? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons. Probably the largest one, Erica, has to do with radiation therapy because it's important to remember that a woman with breast cancer is oftentimes treated with removal of that part of the tumor, a lumpectomy, and then subsequent radiation therapy. Now, radiation is excellent at killing the cancer, mm -hmm. but it can also damage normal, healthy tissue. And with that damage comes an increased risk of scarring mm -hmm. or asymmetry or even infection down the road. Also women with breast cancer who get implants for reconstructive purposes, no different than any other woman. They might electively choose down the road that they want to change or revise that implant just due to a, a need for changing the size mm -hmm. or the shape of the implant. Okay, there are not, while the FDA is saying, look, these are still safe, right. they're not without risks. So what are Correct. some of those risks? Anytime you do any type of surgery, Erica, we say it here again and again, there are always risks and you need to be aware of those risks. Primarily for silicone implants, as there are for saline implants, plans, there are basic risks that every woman needs to know about. Number one, there can be a, something called a capsule formation, which is basically scar tissue that forms in the chest wall around the implant. It can rupture, which obviously could be a significant issue if you're talking about silicone or saline. It can leak slowly over time. Mm -hmm. And like any foreign body or device placed inside our bodies, there's an increased risk for infection. All of those need to be on the table with any woman considering getting implants. You mentioned these are also the risks for, for um, saline implants. Right. Is one safer than the other? Saline has been on the market much longer. It is, and you know what? They're basically used equally. Um, some women feel that silicone looks and feels more natural, but other women prefer to go with saline because if it were to leak or rupture, it's just salt water in mm -hmm. your body. So it's an individual decision. Women should talk about it with their plastic surgeon. And really quickly, how do you monitor those implants for safety? Be self-aware. You want to keep an eye on your body, yourself, and your doctor look for things like pain sagging asymmetry some women need MRIs to look for leaks Jen thanks you bet